Welcome to Star Citizen AA with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. Today in my state of the game, I'm going to talk a little bit about turrets. Well, let's make that a lot of it. And I'm not looking to openly criticize CIG here. What I'm looking for is to get people thinking outside of the box. Because right now, I think that at CIG, turrets might be falling under a communication problem called groupthink where, you know, everyone just agrees with the status quo and doesn't bring up any alternatives and they all just go with whatever the leader says. And the leader being Chris Roberts. So I'm not even trying to criticize Chris Roberts. What I'm trying to say is that these turrets work in a system where you're in a 1930s to very, 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 very early 1940s bomber. They are very hard to use. They're very disorienting, and it takes the, the pilot being very good at what they do to keep you in your turret on, well, keeping your pipper on the target. Unless you're standing still, it gets very difficult to actually use turrets whatsoever. In World War II, turrets provided an amazing amount of cover fire for aircraft such as the B-25 Mitchell, the B-26, the B-17, the B-24, the Shetland. I, I, got a, I can name all these different aircraft, but none of them, none of them were ever able to fly unescorted until we had the B-29. Now, that doesn't mean the B-29 was the end-all be-all, that it couldn't be destroyed. And yes, I'm using the American bombers here because obviously it was the American bomber campaign that was the largest of the bomber campaigns in the world. And yes, I know there was the Blitz and I know that there was the Battle of Britain, but B-17s and B-24s and B-29s in the Japanese theater dropped millions of tons of bombs on the enemy. And I think that we could all rest assured that their daily attacks on the enemy led to their capitulation in the end. But the biggest problem for bombers early on was that they couldn't protect themselves. No matter how many weapons, even the B-17s, it was very simple for Messerschmitts and Falkowulfs and Zeros and other Oscars, whatever it might be, to get in and find a way to down the bombers. Yes, it was still dangerous, and yes, many of them died, but predominantly there were tens of, and, all, and sometimes whole squadrons of bombers that didn't make it back after a raid. And it wasn't until the P-38, the P-47, and the P-51, which actually changed the tide in the air war, and their escorting of the bombers over to enemy territory that the bombers were actually able to complete their mission with fewer losses since they had escorts. Well, now pulling all this into Star Citizen, Chris Roberts wants to improve the gameplay. He really wants us to work together as a team. And he likes to envision Luke Skywalker and Han Solo shooting down the TIE fighters in the Millennium Falcon. And that was fun. It was actually really, really awesome to see on screen. But there were a couple of things happening in that scene that don't happen in our game. A, they weren't really moving the guns. They were in a sighting location and the guns were being moved remotely. And B, they had weapon systems that auto-locked on a target and followed it and gave them the opportunity to make little fine movements to get the pipper on the part of the target that they wanted to shoot, thus letting them destroy it. In World War II, they found out that the cover fire provided by one person, and if one person died, you would have one whole flank of the aircraft not covered. It, it was really, 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 well, it, it, it was one of the downfalls of manned turrets. The second thing is, even with the actuators, manned turrets wouldn't be able to move fast enough to keep up with the fighters of the day. So what did they do? How did they change this back in 1944? Now, let's remember, 
We're in 2948, and this is 1944, which is a thousand and four years ago. It was fixed, and let's go to the fix. Well, folks, I'm stealing footage from War Thunder here to bring you a 3D view of the B-29. Now, the B-29, you'll see in the lower right-hand corner, had a remote turret, but it didn't just have a remote turret. The B-29 was big enough to actually fit a computer on board. There were five viewing stations. There was a blister on top, two on the sides, one in the bombardier, and one in the tail. I think, in all sincerity, there were probably more like seven, but let's stick with five. And there were four turrets. There was two in the front and two in the back, and then there was the tail gunner. Here you see... The difference between a manned turret and the unmanned turret, the one where the actual gunner is using a remote system. These are sketches from 1944. The B-29 had a system that not only decided which guns needed to train on the target when one of the gunners was firing on a target, but also could compute the lead angle based on wind, airspeed, humidity, and gravity. And in one situation, with 20 fighters attacking it, a B-29 survived shooting down seven of them and wounding others enough for them to break off the attack. In Star Citizen, we want to have fun. In Star Citizen, we want to play together as a team. We want to be there with our friends. We want those memorable moments of completing a mission and getting through it when all odds are against you, kind of like the Death Star or the Death Star 2, and getting back to our corp or Terror or Sol, wherever it might be, Earth, and getting to the nearest pub and having a beer with those friends and talking about it and creating legends and singing songs. No, we're not Welsh. We won't sing songs, but you know what I'm saying. The B-29, the P-61 Blackhawk, the A-26 all used remote turrets. By the end of the war, the U.S. had moved away from remote turrets. The B-36 had a remote turret, and then eventually turrets disappeared because electronic countermeasures and stealth and other advanced technologies were created to make it more possible for bombers to complete their target without ever being seen. But in Star Citizen, we're trying to have this World War II, Star Wars-esque feel in it. And I think turrets need to be re-envisioned, reimagined, and use some of the technology from the past. Now, there's a second piece of turrets, their placement. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, with showing off pictures and everything. I'll let you look at the B-29 here. We look at things very linearly in Star Citizen instead of in that 3D box. Turrets are placed on our ships kind of like they were ships of a Navy, whether it be the British Navy, the U.S. Navy, the French Navy, the Russian Navy, the Japanese Navy, the Chinese Navy, whatever country you're in. But they're, they're put on ships to fire in arcs that are reminiscent of ships in, in a naval vessel that floats on water. Also, the cover fire provided by these turrets is limited because they cannot move in a 180, 360 degree way. So 360 degree, meaning it could turn or rotate fully around, and 180, meaning it could go raise all the way up and through. Man turrets cannot do that, especially in this game where CIG refuses to make turrets where you actually go upside down inside a constellation. In space, there is no up, there is no down, there is no left, there is no back, and, you know, right, there is no fore, there is no back. Um, there is, because we're using references of our ship, but when you reference the outside, there isn't. You're up, down, left, right. Might be somebody's left, right, up, down. Might be somebody's down, up, left, you know, right, left. You're going to be in all different situations. In this 
case, what I'm saying is that instead of making turrets that are traditional and have these traditional looks that belong on a ship in the Navy or belong on a plane that really is just firing things that are either coming down at them on an angle because nothing really came straight down at you. Um, well, that's not true. We all know that fighters dove right on the top of a B-24 because if they hit that center spar, that plane just cracked in half and fell to the ground. But... We don't have that here. And I think that all turrets in the game should actually be spherical balls that fit into an actuator that allows it to turn 360 degrees around and 180 degrees up and down. You know, and, and you're going to get a lot more cover fire. So what I'm proposing is that CIG actually look at turrets. Think about the placement of turrets and think about the viability of turrets. Man turrets, though... I had a blast here. There is absolutely nothing that I can say about me having fun here. But was I useful? Eh, I killed a couple. Onion killed a couple. Yeah, Onion was one of my friends playing at the time. But really, I didn't feel that Star Wars moment because I didn't have the same turret that Luke Skywalker had. I didn't have the same controls that Han Solo had. I didn't have the same controls that a gunner in 1944 had. All I would have to do in 1944 is point my point my target, put my pipper on that on that fighter and the computer did the rest of the work. Now I know that CIG is trying to balance the game. I know CIG is trying to balance the fun. I know CIG is trying to make things in the vision of Chris Roberts. But I feel that turrets need to be imagined, you know, reimagined. I feel that turrets need to have a change. And it doesn't have to start with the older ships. It could start with ships henceforth and be retrofitted into ships as time goes on. There was a time, an opportunity that I had, speaking with the designer of the Vanguard as he was designing it. I had ample opportunity to visit CIG in the early days, being friends with Ben and being able to go into LA whenever I was sent there by Apple and just call them up and see if I can go. I had two such visits to CIG and on the second one, I was the only person there. There was no other backer there. I, I kind of got unfettered access to a few things. I got to talk to Chris Smith about the reworking of the... Uh, he was doing the Hornet back then. So that was when the Hornet was getting redone. And he was also redoing the whole back of the Constellation. And I got to talk to the designer of... I think it was David Hobbins, the designer of the Mustang which I found very intriguing. But when I walked over to, and I think it's Grimwall, I can't remember his name, um, the gentleman that was making the Vanguard the next time I was there, I actually walked over to it and I, and I saw what he was trying to come up with and it looked like part P38, part something. And what I did was I brought up the P61 Black Widow. I saw the turret he was building and I said, but if you're trying to capture what was going on in that day. Why don't you look at this? I said, look at the all glass back, the all glass nose. This is a beautiful looking ship. And look at that turret. The turret is controlled remotely by either the bombardier or the tail gunner. All they have to do is flip a switch to send control back and forth. He looked at me with awe and kind of made note and saved the page. But when the Vanguard came out, we didn't have the turret that I suggested. We had a man turret. I'm done with man turrets, though I'll, I'm not done with them. I'll, I'll play in somebody's ship and fire at ships and have fun in them because I can say it is somewhat fun. But it is not exhilarating. It doesn't make me sweat. It doesn't make my heart race. It doesn't put me on the seat of my, my, my you know, on the edge of my seat. I, I just think that CIG needs to reimagine these. I just want to give you one more example. Here is what the computer did 
for the B-29 back in 1944. All I did was point at the plane and the guns fired on it and hit it. I want that kind of feeling. It's still not going to be perfect, but it's going to make turrets a lot more fun. I'd like to get a discussion started about this. If you feel that turrets can can 100% benefit from the conversation I started, please comment below. If you totally 100% support CIG in the way turrets are today, comment below. I am not right. This is my opinion and each one of us has one. I'd like to see what you all think. By the way, I got the graphics for this episode from a Popular Mechanics article. Popular Mechanics ran an article a few years back about the B-29 and how well ahead of the time the turret system was on that ship. If you think about B-29s, you have to think about bombers in general. And World War II saw a huge advancement in technologies with bombers. You had the Norden bomb site. You had pressurized cabins. You had super and turbocharged engines. You had bombers that would fly at 30 or 40,000 feet. And you had both manned and remote turrets, not to mention devastating, devastating bomb loads. Folks, thank you for watching, listening, and commenting. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you don't, click the thumbs down. It will help me get better. If you want to subscribe, please do, but make sure to click that bell-shaped icon for notifications. And for those of you that want to help the channel out even more, please go to patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl. There'll be a link at the end of the video for that. And with that said, you all be safe out there. And I'll talk to you soon.